Hey, hello friends, and welcome to another edition of the Drop Jaw Flies Fly Tying Tutorial. I know it's been a while since we've done one, but it's getting cold and it's time to start uh, cranking up the vise. And uh, today, I've got uh, the juvenile whitefish. And this is a really cool head. Uh, it goes through the water in a really uh, different type of action that goes back and forth and goes up and down and even at a dead drift it has kind of enough of a realistic look that you could get a strike in the winter time so let's crank this out just about lost it okay well to get started we're always going to start from the back end and we always like doing these tying tutorials um, where we walk you through it and they take a little bit of time but hopefully you can learn something if we do it that way. So what we're going to do, what we're going to start out with is a TMC 105 and it's an egg hook, glow bug hook, um, should say tile, uh, tail on there too. But anyway, we're going to use this to make our tail. So get that loaded up. And as far as our thread for the tail, we use gray UTC 140 denier. So let me get a this down on the hook. Pull pretty tight. We want it, we don't want our thread to slip. And uh, something new that I haven't had for the other uh, tutorials is this pair of scissors from Rising. Great sharpness, uh, really comfortable to hold, and I love them. And our logo's on there, which is pretty cool. They'll do that for you. So, try these out. Love them. We'll get that trimmed up and we're going to use our gray saddle hackle. This is pretty much what we use for all of our tails. So I'll just kind of grab two. This is a, a bigger pattern. So I want to put the concave sides on out. Match them up. And we'll overhang the hook about an inch. Get these on. Clip that off. And just to add a little bit of sparkle to the back end of that tail, I'm going to take three pieces of this tan UV crystal flash. And who doesn't love crystal flash? I love it. So I've got four pieces there. Double that up. I'm always so wasteful on these tutorials. I could get three tails out of these lengths, but just to keep this rolling and moving, I'm just going to use the whole thing. And don't let it go all the way. Clip it about an eighth of an inch from the end of those uh, saddle hackle feathers. We're going to come back in and get another pair of saddle hackle. Jerk those off. Again, match up the tips. Stick those on. Compress them. Kind of have to take big wraps around this because of the feather that you're you have to wrap around on this shank. So clip those off. And I'm just gonna tighten this down a little bit. We're gonna use some stinky. Fly tires glue. And the main thing with this is the brush. It's just easy to get it on there. And I'm going to put a whip in there. Doesn't have to be to the end because we're going to put a little bit of more material on this. So I'm going to flip it upside down. And I want to build up a little bit of the fish's, supposed fish's body on the bottom of that tail. So I got some ice fur here, and this is the polar, polar white or polar bear or cream. And uh, you can see about the amount right there. There's going to be a lot of amounts and this and this on, on my tying uh, videos because it's hard to really gauge or measure what that is. So I've got my hook upside down. I'm going to take that 
fiber, wrap it kind of loosely, pull it to the other side. Well, I'm going to wrap right up to the eye almost and then go on the other side of the hook and then force it up with my fingers. Push it up. We're just going to take a little bit of it right there. We're not going to have this go the full length of the saddle hackle. I'm going to take my scissors and put it right on the hook. If I can get this to stay up. Right there. Cut it. So we're building up that tail a little bit. I just had glue all over the those fibers there, so I chucked those. Okay, there's another length of fibers. And now we're going to take these all the way to where we left off. Right underneath the barb. Make a wrap, wrap. Take this side, pull it, fold it back towards the hook, and then we're just going to make a snip right there. Now the bottom of our tail looks kind of like the very last bit of the fish's body as it moves up towards the tail. We're going to flip this around, and on top of that, I've got some grizzly marabou and sand. I'm just going to take a couple of these. Sure, you guys can get these just about anywhere. We're just going to use the tips. That really cool part right at the end, just as a little covering to take up some space. I'm going to put that right there on top. Loose, then a tight wrap, snug that up, and then lock it down right at the eye. And then cut this really close, cut these two really close. Just like that, and then pull it back, wrap. I'm going to put some glue here. Be careful not to get too close to this or breathe it in because you might not be able to smell for a few days, which has happened to me. Whip that off, and there's glue in there which is going to hold it and speed the drying process up a little bit. Okay, there's our tail. That's what it looks like on both sides. Good, good to go. Okay, next hook. And I use these a lot. It's the TMCO 8089, and this is a size six. So great gap, great hooking ability. And they, they tend to stay sharp quite a bit uh, through heavy use. Now, well, one thing about the hooks, I got a, a guy not long ago that was concerned about me using these in my fly patterns. And, you know, and I would say if you don't like a three hooked fly or uh, if you think that they might cause undue damage to a fish, Go ahead and, and pinch those barbs down. I mean, we leave the barbs on there for you to make the decision whether you want to crimp them down or not. And if you don't, if you want to cut this hook, uh, cut it right down here at the band, and then it's basically just a shank. So, uh, people that are concerned with that, I'm going to use a heavier th uh, thread to articulate. Uh, it's going to be you can't see it, but it's the UTC and it's the two tendon ear. And what that does is it just fills up the the shank a lot better, quicker. Um, it's just basically getting more water on the fire. So now that I've got that on, um, here's here's where these are handy with the little wire cutters in the back of the jaws. This stuff is kind of expensive to use to articulate flies with, but it's very strong, flexible. That's what we use to articulate our flies. So go ahead and I'm going to cut maybe about four inches. And on my side, I'm going to take the wire and put it right on the side of the hook. 
That, that way when I start to, to wrap it down, it doesn't fly over the top because of the thread torque. And then just gently start to move it, ease it on top of the hook. And then right when you want to come off the bend of the hook right here and not stop up here. If you come off the back and down, when this is wiggling, it will have less of a tendency to swing back underneath the hook here and get caught. So come down off the back, then really work that down. And then you try, you try to pull that out sometime if you, if you wrap it tight enough. So I'm going to do something a little bit different. Um, I usually use the little round beads to articulate or whatever, but today I'm just going to mess around because I'm going to use this fly. These are the long, little long tubes. And you can stick your wire in just like that. Put my wire through the eye of the hook. And then what you do is you put this glass tube on top. And you don't have to try and put your wire back through those little tubes, which is kind of fun. And where this is just for me, I'm going to do it that way. Actually, it might give this fly away in a giveaway. So you got your you got your wire now. I'm going to wrap it right to the side of the wire that we first wrapped down. There we go. Oh, wrap that bad boy. Get it down tight. And you got an articulation. It, it's pretty quick. And I love the color of that pearl glass. This lets the uh, back end swing around side to side. And it still lets the fly swing up the tail, but not all the way. And so that is what we're going to do today. Because I, I get bored doing the same thing over and over again. So that's how we're going to articulate it today. Now you got this rest of the wire right here. And what I like to do is take it over the shank away from me. Wrap up underneath. And make a couple wraps right there. And then wrap it to the side. And I've cut it just to the length to where... It goes all the way to the back of my articulation. I don't have to cut it. And then wrap the heck out of that thing. Wrap it. And that is not going to come off. But we're going to make sure. I mean, we want to use these flies for years if we can. Um, I'm going to show you how to repair the head in another video. And we're going to you, you've got to be able to sharpen hooks. And if you do that, you can keep these for a long time. So, let's whip this off. Nice! Okay, back to our 140 UTC. Get this wrapped back on. We're ready to roll. Get that clipped. Okay, now we got to finish building our body and we're going to start on the bottom. So I'm going to go back to this polar ice fur. This stuff is so cool. Um, it has a really silky feeling and it flows really nice in the water. We know that when we pull it through weeds and stuff like that, that you can pretty easily. Uh, get the, the moss and the dirt and the crap out of it. Oh, Doesn't everybody know we're filming? Okay. So anyway, we've got our polar fiber or ice fur. That's the real name of this. We're going to wrap it and get it over so it covers up, just covers up those glass tubes that we use to articulate this with and I'm going to cut at this angle not at a 90 degree with the fibers but almost at a 60 degree now we've got a little bit of body up under there and take the rest of this and put a put it on the sides 
And we're going to cover up the side now. We just did the bottom, now we're going to do the side. Okay, I'm going to get this trimmed up and give him a haircut. I have had no beauty school training, but I feel like I have because I'm pretty good with these scissors. So. Now the deer hair guys are the ones that can really use the scissors. Okay, so we've got that. Now on the side of our juvenile whitefish, they have a couple different colors. And one of them can be gold. You know, they differ from area to area. So we're going to put a little bit of gold. And this is um, from Just Add H2O Products, the Sculpting Flash Fiber. And the real, it is... Tan is what it is, but it's got some really cool flash fibers in this tan. It's basically long pieces of carpet. <laughs> We're going to put this on the side, right on the flank. And we'll run it all the way to the top and then all the way back down the side. Make sure that's in there good, and then we'll cut it to the right length. It's just going to overhang the eye of the back hook here. So now we've got some of that in. And what we're going to do is tie in our barred natural rabbit strip from Hairline. I love the rabbit. I'll probably always use rabbit. Um, it does get heavy and it gets kind of funky after it's wet. But it does last quite a while. has a cool movement. And there's so many uh, different colors that are built into these uh, fibers. There's all kinds of tans and grays, um, creams. And uh, they have a great look. It has a really cool look in the water. And to keep in with tradition, we've got to use some natural fiber or skin or feather. And I like the rabbit, so we're going to use it. I'm going to part it. You have to do it to the right size. Now, I don't want it to overhang that far. And so just to show you, that's a good measurement. I'm going to tie this in right here at the base of where the, where the hook starts to bend off. So hold it there where you think you you want it, and if it overhangs way too far, if it's going to impede the movement of the tail, come back up here, and I guess it's going to be maybe a half inch shorter. So what I've got it, I parted it right there, and now it overhangs to where it, it starts to hit the gray fiber, and I'll get some really good movement there. So let's move our thread back right to the end lay this on top and wrap it down now having all this long material out here can kind of be a problem but if you get a good wrap to where this isn't going to move and then lock it down on this side we're going to cut this and you can go ahead and cut it I'm just going to leave it a quarter inch long past the eye of the hook and uh, I'm not going to cut through the fiber I'm going to cut through a part part it Cut it, got the right length, and now there's no waste there. Lift this back up, and let's lock these wraps down a little bit. So we've wrapped onto the rabbit. Then what you do is you pull the rabbit back and wrap down on the shank, and, and now those wraps that we did on the rabbit are locked down, so this isn't going to move. Take some glue, just a teeny dab right there to make sure that that rabbit doesn't go anywhere. Okay, now let's, let's build some body. And this is the Larva Lace Opal Estaz White. What I'm going to do is just find an end. And I know I don't need much of this. I'm going to cut maybe five inches off. I'm going to take it about three sixteenths from the eye of the hook. Wrap it up on top. So when I come around the bottom, it fills up that whole underneath part. And that's, that's what I really want. I don't really care so much about the top, but the fish will see it from the bottom. So we're just going to wrap it right to there. 3 16 from the eye. Come over the top. Really secure that down. Give that a few wraps. Then we're going to do our locking wraps right in front, just like we did the rabbit. Now it's not going anywhere. That's our waist, dang it. Okay, now it's finished building the bottom. We're gonna go back to the ice fur. Now each time as we move closer to the head, I'm gonna pull out more and more 
of this so it gets thicker, the body gets thicker as we go towards the head. So there's a wrap towards me. There's a wrap to your side that you can see. Cut, cut. And with the remaining piece, I'm gonna put this right, right in the middle now. And then fold the remaining part towards the center of the hook. So now we filled up that part right there. So now bring your rabbit over the top and pull pretty tight there. I'm gonna make sure that this rabbit's totally lined up. Cinch it down. Now take a, a loose wrap and pull kinda tight up, a loose wrap. Now it's totally surrounded with thread and really lock that down. Pull the top of the rabbit up and do a couple wraps right there. That rabbit's locked down. Now we need to do that gold flank. So the remaining part that I used for the last hook, I still have it left. So I'm going to start on my side. Loose, loose. Bring it underneath. And you can see that. Wrap it down the side. Cut it. Cut it to length. And then just so you can see how everything's going to look. You can use a toothbrush or whatever, but I find that these automotive brushes or whatever they use to clean paint, painting equipment works so much better. So I got it brushed out and I can see how everything's going to look. We're going to add our first bit of flash here which is gonna be this angel hair, and it's the root beer. Just pull some out. And I like, I like quite a bit. We're gonna add this right below the rabbit, right on top of the gold flash fiber that we just tied in. Wrap it down, then take your th thread and do a wrap right behind the eye of the hook. Fold this over underneath the rabbit. And we're going to cut this to length. Okay, now we've got that. Now we just need to whip this section off. Tight. Plenty of eye to work with. Ooh, it's looking good right there. Would you use that right there, Chad? Just put a little head on it? Totally. Chad's right here, by the way. Awesome Chad with doing all the media. We are very serious at drop jaw. <laughs> fishing, fly fishing, fly tying, everything should be fun. Okay, so yeah, you can imagine if you had that fly right there and you stuck like a baby whitey head on there or a pinhead or, or something else, you could stop and, you, and you, that could be a really cool fly. It's about three and a half inches long and fish that anywhere, you're going to catch fish on that. But we're not going to stop there, we're going to keep going. So we've got that done and uh, progressing to the head, we've got the number two, 8089. This is a pretty wide gap hook. It's kind of a, it has, still has that dull bronze color which blends in really well with these other materials. And if fish do see the hooks or if it does care, or if they do care, this might be the less intrusive or the, the less, um, easier for them to spot I get I don't know we don't know you ever talk to a fish and ask them that if, if you get the chance let me know what they say but uh, 
We're going to go back to our 210 UTC in the white. We're going to uh, really cover this shank quickly. I practiced this turbo wrap, guys. Save you some time. Hook is wrapped. Cut that. We're going to use about uh, five inches of wire this time because we have more hook shank to cover. So get that cut. Quarter inch behind the eye of the hook. Really get that cemented down and then gradually come over the top of the hook till you're almost dead center and down about that far. Wrap that down really well. Good. So what we're going to use for a weight are these awesome weights right here. Tungsten, a new package, and go through go through these like crazy. These aren't cheap as far as weights go, but they work so well on our flies. So I'm going to take the end and put it right maybe a sixteenth in front of the point of our hook. Maybe an eighth. Wrap that down. Now let's articulate this fly. And instead of the pearl, <laughs> so it goes everywhere, I'm going to add a little bit of red this time to simulate, I don't know, blood? Who doesn't like the color red anyway? Blood up front. So you add your tube or your bead, whatever you're going to use, and then put your fly on. And then add your other tube. And when you do that, just leave a little bit of room in between if you do use these tubes. And I haven't seen other people use these, but I like to use them just to, so I don't get bored. I tie a lot of flies, and it's easier to articulate this way. I don't know. Uh, if it's better, I wouldn't say it's better than just using a bead and running the wire back through But it's another way to do it and it's fun So you can see that the fly is going to have up and down movement and side to side And it has a, a pretty good spacing If you do have wire That won't fit back through a bead because you bought beads that the opening was too small that's where these tubes can shine. So anyway, got that down. And what we do is remember to, to grab the wire, bring it around, and then wrap it back towards the hook. Now this one's just a little bit long, so I'm going to cut it. And we'll get that down. We'll whip finish it. Now we're done with our 210 denier. And we don't ever want this to come apart. Because like I said, we're planning on using these for as long as we can. Maybe years. And know that when you buy a fly from us, it's the same process. So trying to treat these like your most expensive crankbaits or whatever. Don't want them to come undone or break. Okay, now we're going to repeat the process that we did on those other two steps. We're going to get our 140 UTC white on. And we're going to use, this will be the last time that we use this ice fur on this fly. We get just a slightly bigger chunk, about like that. About like that. And what we're going to do is... If you, if to show you on this side, I'm going to overhang that articulation by about three sixteenths to a quarter. I want it to, to land about right there. So I'll tie this on. 
flip it over to the other side and get it running down the, the shank of the hook and then push it up. Make sure that's really set. And I'll cut this side just a little bit. Obviously this side is long. And if you look straight down in your vise, you can match it up to this side and make a cut so they're perfectly even. Now with the remainder, take it and move it up towards the center of the hook. Get it on there. Take this side, fold it around, and tie it on. And you'll get a nice full body that way. Okay. Um, so that's the bottom of the fly. We're going to take some more of this gold flash fiber, or tan, about that much. I'm going to overhang the white that we just did by a little bit. Leave it long. Move it over to the other side. Get it down. Cut. Cut. And that's good on, on the bottom. Now we're going to move it up on the top side. So it's going almost straight down the shank. Cut it. You see what that looks like? Now I want to ask you guys, how often do you see a, a juvenile whitefish like that? Sometimes you catch them, but most of the times they are, they're tucked down in the rocks because they know, I, maybe they know, that if they're out in the open they're going to get pounded by a brown or a cutty, even a rainbow. And so that's what we end up with is kind of a little gap right there on our articulation. And I could put more gold there, but we're going to start with our darker color. So this stuff is golden bronze back. And I don't need a ton of it right here yet, but I do want to cover up that little bit of articulation bead that's there. So I'm going to take this right on top of the hook and fold it back over. You can see what that looks like right there. So we got that covered up and then I'm going to take just a little bit more on the top sides, fold that over and there we go. We have most of that covered up right there. And this goes on with, with color blending from dark on the top to pro gradually progressing towards light or white or cream or whatever on the bottom. Flash this up, this little section just a little bit. And uh, this, when you do tie flies this way and you really blend in through the articulation part, you do lose, you do impede the movement of the fly, but not enough that it makes it ineffective. Um, these, these white fish have a really tight swim they don't, you don't see them jerking all over. Maybe they do when they're about to die or they've been stunned. But when you're stripping them through the water, they really do have a really tight, tight swim, tight, tight wiggle. Okay, now we got it flashed. Now we'll go back to our rabbit. And this is a part right here where I wouldn't taper that out or cut it to a point. Just leave it flat across right there because we want the bulk. So... Lay it down and measure it. What I'm looking for is I want this end of the leather to go right over the eye of this hook, the middle hook, right there. Get that length figured out. And get my thread back to where it needs to be to wrap that down. There we go. Sometimes this pesky rabbit, I'm just going to cut it where I need to right now. Now with rabbit, 
it's really easy with the torque of your thread to wrap that over the top of the hook and to avoid that. So I'm holding it down really tight with my left hand. Bring your thread up and just gently rest it in that part. When you get the thread all the way around, lift up gently again and lift up and you'll get it set where you need it and then go over it three to six times. Then we're gonna lock that down right in front. We're gonna add just a dab, just a teeny bit right there. It's not going anywhere. Then what we do is come back to our chenille, little bit longer piece. And this is that opal Estaz pearl, which is super cool. I could probably just look at this for hours. You know what I mean? Just look at it. It's awesome. Right on top. Come down around the bottom. A full turn. And then just wrap it kind of close to itself. I'm trying to thicken this part up. Right to the weight. Right to the front of that weight. Don't go any farther than that. If you're asking why don't you take that farther, oh, it's common. Fix it quick. Pull it out. Make yourself like a Hoover vacuum. Suck it right up. And get this back on. I'm going to wrap back over the top of this again just to make sure that that doesn't come undone. I'm going to throw a whip finish in there too because in case that happens again I don't want it to come undone. Okay, so take your head. I got plenty of room to make sure that the eye of the hook sticks out the front. So I can build up some more material but if you take the, the heavy bulky part of the chenille all the way to the front, you're not going to be able to put the head on. All right. So now, usually this part of the body on the fish is wider than it is on the back. And this might be totally crazy to get this, to blend the colors like this, but it's just fun to do. It's part of the fly tying. It's not necessarily necessary to catch a fish. Heck no. But we're going to use this wider flash fiber. And this is uh, natural belly. So take it over to your side. I'm going to cut it here. I'm going to cut it there. And then, so that's the sides. And then I'm going to take this right in the middle, right in between those, and right in front of the barb, right there. Over, over, and get that side wrapped down, about right there, and that's going to be a good looking belly right there. Okay, now we'll pull our rabbit down, but before I do, I'm going to put our tan fiber on. Put that on both sides, cut it, cut it. And let's throw some dark in there of that uh, same flash fiber. Now you're thinking, hey, I don't have all this material. Well, you can substitute whatever you want or you can not even use it. You can just use the rabbit and maybe some marabou on the bottom if you want. Okay, you've got the rabbit. Remember, don't go too hard. Lock it down right there. Now we need to check this fit again of the head. And we've added some more material, so it's just barely going to fit which is good. We still have enough room for some to tie in some flash. Is this definitely doesn't take up that much flash. I'm going to grab some 
Throw it right underneath the leather on the rabbit. Right there. Cut it. Cut it. And we're not done. We got one more. I like to put just a little bit more flash on the bottom flank. And this is going to be the pearl angel hair. We're going to add that much. This stuff just looks so awesome in the water. It flows great and it throws some really cool colors. So there we go. Now it's on. Cut it. Cut it. Now is that looking tasty? Gosh, I wish I could talk to some fish. You could talk to fish. You could figure out what was going on. Okay. Now, here's the part where if you wanted to add some red gills or some red throat, this is where you would do it. No, I'm not going to do it on this fly. But on the juvenile whitefish that you purchase from us, it does have it on there. I just didn't get any out material that's like that anyway so anyway let's whip finish this and just give you a shot all the way around kind of see too when you spin that any loose fibers that are there okay i hope you, this gets you guys excited to tie streamers because there's so many variations, there's so many cool things that you can do because when you go to the fly shop and you see some cool flies or whatever, but they might not have an element or a material that you would want to use. So if you tie flies, if you learn how to do it, or if you're already proficient at it, which there's so many, so many awesome tires, you can add in those things that, uh, elements of color and texture and what make the, the fly swim too that you want to and you can get specific that way so we got that uh, super glue on there let's dry it okay it should be dried enough and then this E6000 glue says it causes cancer in California, and I have been noticing some things lately because I, I use it a ton, you know. Ugh. Matt <laughs> at Loon would probably go, dude, you're crazy, man. Start using our stuff. Um, but this, I don't really need to get the UV light out or anything, although I should, I could, and I probably will later. Um, but this stuff is definitely stinky. Just add a little bit. Don't doesn't need to be a ton, but just make sure you go all the way around the fly. And if you have a rotary vise, it makes it handy. So we've got our glue on there. You don't want to let it drip. And then you turn the fly upside down. That way you can line up the bottom of the hook and get it totally square with the hook point. You, if you do it this way and you can't see the hook, you might put the head on somewhat crooked. Put it upside down. Pull everything back, slide it on carefully, gently, and then push it on there. You can get that centered right where you need it. And I'll just kind of work that on, get a really tight, tight fit. And now we got our head on. And the last step, of course, is if you look at juvenile whitefish, they have the par marks, and I just go crazy for this marking up the fly for some reason. I just really like it. So I'm going to start, turn it uh, sideways on its side, come back about a quarter of an inch. This is the, uh, I think most people know what this is. It's the cop Copic, Copic markers. This is W5, warm gray. And this one doesn't leave a really dark, dark mark. It's just subtle. And so just work your way down. Turn it over, do the other side. 
mark everything, mark the flash, or don't use this and don't worry about it if you don't have a marker because like we've said but in the past this step I'm pretty sure <laughs> the fish do not care if you do it or not whether they're gonna eat this fly and then just for the fly tying aspect again I'm gonna go inside of that gray with this purple and just add a teeny bit as I've studied the, the white fish before when I've been able to see the little guys they have a little color prism in on their skin which is so cool they are a beautiful fish and inside those little par marks there's different colors so there we go we're done the juvenile whitefish you can purchase this from us done or you can buy the heads um, this thing has a lot of movement it, it does have the, the up and down, the side to side. It has the profile. If you want to dead drift it, it has a, a really cool fishy look to it. Um, so there it is, the Juvenile Whitefish. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thanks to Chad for all of his hard work in uh, recording this and putting it up with me. And we'll see you out on the water. Remember to stick them solid.